Hey kids, welcome to Stylus Rumble. I got, this is kind of like a rigging and effects time thing. I had some super fun technical difficulties this week where apparently the 15 license and the 14 license don't like to live together in harmony. So they decided to just destroy one another. And I spent about six hours on remote fixing with the Tomb Boom guys. And we seem to have a temporary solution. So for now I have my computer working, but I'm on 14 because I'm afraid to open 15 because my day job uses 14. They haven't switched over to 15 yet. And I want to be able to do the job that pays for all my you know, food and stuff, things that I need to be alive. Only one announcement is that I'm going to cut down from two videos a week to one video a week, at least for December, because there's so much stuff going on with the holidays and I just want to relax a little bit. So I threw on my back. I work too much. Don't don't sit in a chair for 15 hours a day, you guys. Get out and do walk somewhere. Go look at a human in real life. That sounds like a fun thing to do. <laughs> Don't end up an old, cripply 30-year-old like me. I'm 32 and I have the spine of a 90-year-old. It's bad. Okay, so there's that. And then Scripter has been making some fun new stuff. So if you want to pop over to the Scripter Gumroad, there's now a beta version of controllers for the color card and the color scale because we were talking about which modules would be the most useful to have like a gooey image something that you can just slide around in your screen and for me the color scale is definitely something that i'd love to have a little slider for so go check out the betas feedback and stuff always any suggestions you have leave them in the comments below and i'll forward them and we can get some nice new toys for all of the people involved yay new toys but today i want to talk a little bit about wheels here we have a little wheel and the turning of wheels i have kind of glanced over wheels before in my advanced ordering video but i'll just quickly go over that stuff here so this guy doesn't this is not a spoke wheel i think we're going to need two different kinds of wheels but we're just going to talk about some of the ways that we we can rotate these wheels. All right, here we got a spoke wheel. So this, this will display a little better, but there's, you know, you've got all kinds of different wheels. Maybe we got a Ferris wheel, that'd be more of a spoke wheel. And then we got the kind of car, cartoon car tire wheel. So you can approach to both of those in different ways. What we're gonna do with the spoke wheel and talk a little bit about peg ordering. So if I take this peg, I don't have any of my scripts up. I actually had to reinstall Harmony several times. So all my fancy custom scripts and stuff are gone. I have updated a few of my hotkeys that are essential to life, but uh, at least I didn't have to reformat. That, that was my biggest fear. So if we use this top peg, let me zoom right in. I'm going to use this as peg top and we'll call this peg bottom. So we're clear what we're doing. So I'm gonna grab the top peg and this is the one I'm going to squish on. And then I'm gonna grab the bottom peg and I'm gonna rotate. So of course we're gonna get this wonky wheel. And the thing is about uh, these pegs is normally if you just have one peg, if you squish, if you squish and then rotate, that's what you're going to get, right? You, it squishes it first and then it rotates. That's just how the math is done. So instead, if we rotate on this one and we squish on the top peg using our all keyframes mode on so that it goes all the way across the board, then our wheel is going to rotate. And you can see it's slightly off center, my like my center wheel, but it's going to rotate fine, right? And you could even go along and scale peg. We can do this sort of thing. So we just add a little bit of squish, depending on how cartoony your thing is. And then your wheel's gonna have a little bit of bob. That's a bit too slow, something like that. So do do be do 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 be do be do do very cartoony and fabulous. So ordering your pegs in just the proper order is one way to get this perspective very easily. And if you want this to feel like it has a little bit more perspective, what you can do is add in a drawing. And this works a little bit better if you're not changing the perspective on the wheel. Like if you have to change the perspective of this as you're going along, that's going to have a little bit more difficulty. But what we can do is just make sure that we use the squish peg only, not the rotate peg, which is this bottom one. Let's rename this now to rotate and we'll rename the bottom, which is now the top one to scale. Naming things is important because then you know what you're doing. So now in our extra drawing, what we can do is just add in a little bit of perspective on our wheel and we can add some on the inside too. Yeah. Be sure to 
do a better job of getting your nice perspective. Make sure that you're thinking about where this wheel is sitting on the ground, that kind of stuff. You know, spend the time. And you could even add in some perspective in here. Close enough. Through the magic of television. And then, of course, you're going to want to extend your exposure. <laughs> Alright, so the center is drifting off a bit just because I wasn't super careful about where I put my center. When you build your wheel, you're going to want to make sure that everything is centered really well if you want to do this sort of thing. But you can see that this part here is not moving at all. It's just a still drawing that's being squished along with the wheel. This part is the only thing that's rotating, the inside. But because it lines up where you think it would, your, your eye is going to think that it's just a turning wheel and everything is fine. You can do some little drawing tricks on this guy to make it look like it's moving, this uh, outer wheel part. And this is going to be the same sort of thing I use to get this cartoony wheel going. So you just throw in a few little swish lines that make sense based on the style of your show. So here I can have one that's much more liney, and here I can have one that's a little bit more iconic and clean. So even little things like wheel swishies, you can think about style as you're doing them. And I always say that if you're doing little loopies like this, to do at least three drawings. Because if you do two drawings, even if it's something simple, it'll look like it's flashing back and forth. But if you have three drawings, it's enough that your eye feels like it just doesn't see the pattern as easily, even though it's only a difference of one drawing. Our eyes are good at two drawings, but not at three or more. You can also get a couple different ones there. And we're just going to cycle it, copy, paste, and we're just going to cycle like a million times. I don't want to paste more than one time. So then you've got this little swishy. I set the exposure on ones. There we go. Looks like your wheel is turning. Now these are going a little bit faster than these guys. Maybe twos is better. I think these guys look a bit better. There you go. I like that one a little better. So then once you've got all that done, you take your wheel. You've got a translate peg. It's always safer to have it on another peg. That way if you need to adjust the speed, say, like your, your boss comes in, you're like, whoa, this needs to rotate at least you know, 10 times faster than that, you can go in and you can rotate it. Now, the thing is, if you rotate this now, you're going to have problems. But what you can do is come into your coordinates and control points window here where it says 400 and a million, whatever. You can jack that up much higher and then it's going to be able to rotate w well that way. So that's a little bit of a, a sneaky thing that it really depends on the order of things that you do. So you need to rotate first, then squish it. If you take this off and then you rotate it, so you rotate it again, so now it's up to a thousand, then you plug it back in, that'll work too. Uh, it's either one of those, but the thing is you can't rotate it while it's squished. See, or it'll, it'll be messed up. We now it's swinging super duper fast, so fast it probably won't even render properly. So let's just change this to 800. Oop. You could also put a cycle in there if you're feeling fancy, but this feels pretty good to me. Now your wheel's moving along. And now you're just going to translate it. So Boom. hold your shift, move it along like that. Let's deactivate this guy. And then we. <laughs> It's going to have to move a lot faster, a lot farther to kind of line up with our wheel spin here. But, I mean, that works totally fine. It looks like a perspective wheel. You probably want to go on an angle. Whee! See, it's rolling down the road. Let's slow it down. It's not going fast enough to... That's a little bit better. That feels more about the speed you'd want it to go. Animation magic. That's a fun little way to do wheels. These guys here... Because you've got all this black around, this like super cartoony wheel, what you can do is separate this guy. So what I'm going to do is take off our hubcap here, cut, paste it onto my new layer, and we'll give it a little bloop. And then I'm just going to have all black. So if I deactivate this now, it's just a black fill. And what we can do, instead of actually moving the whole wheel, we can just move this hubcap. Um, you can, you, I mean, you could shrink down the whole tire Boop. and then move your hubcap 
There you go. So now I've got some fakey little perspective. I mean, you could put in some better perspective if your your show needs it because your wheel is going to be flat because boop, boop. You'd have a flat bit here and here with your wheel. Oh, that's some good perspective, Tracy. Yeah. Apparently I can't draw wheels at 10 o'clock in the morning. But then we're just going to play with that little swishy trick here. So you could add an effects layer or you could draw directly onto your wheel, whatever you want. I'll put in there. Bloop. And what we can do is use like a silver color and just draw on our hubcap. Oh, my preferences are wrong. Do, do, do. That explains why my drawings have been so fat lately. <laughs> so let's go the little lightning bolt sort of shape. I'm back and forth like this. And I just want to be roundabouts. Just do basically really sloppy cleanup on this stuff. That. And then you can rotate it a little bit out of place. You want it close enough, but it's good if this has a little bit of boil, basically. But not too much. You don't want to go in a completely different shape than you've already got. Boop, boop, boop. And copy those. Paste a whole whack of times. And now this wheel is moving. So again, if you put a little bit of like a bob on it, then you've got a bit of a moving wheel. And it feels like it's rotating, even though nothing's actually rotating on this one. So we'll move it. Boop. <laughs> I feel like it should be going the other way. I don't know why. Let's move that on just for flimsies. We'll go that way. Whee! And so if we, I mean, we could use this principle for basically anything. If we wanted to do a Ferris wheel, we could have two of these guys. And just have one over slightly. And now you're going to have two wheels moving in sync. So you can just copy and paste if you need additional wheels. Um, and then if you needed... Let's just deactivate this. That doesn't really help with the visuals. Um, but the one in the back here, I mean, we could use another drawing and we could create just a, an axle between the two of them. And again, if you wanted to make the axle look like it's moving, you could put it on its own peg and have just a little bit of shift so it's just wiggling. Or you could uh, put some move lines on it. So just animate some little speed lines as it's rotating around, give it a little bit of look like it's moving too. Extend the exposure. And now it's got a little axle. Should have hooked it up to the scale peg. There we go. So now we got a little axle in there just by put, throwing an extra drawing. And then if we needed to do something like a Ferris wheel cart, one of these little things where people sit in it, three little people in our Ferris wheel. Let's fill in our wheels. What you do is make sure he's behind the front wheel. And the thing about these Ferris wheel cars, I guess you'd call them, is they always want to stay vertical. So really all you have to do is follow one of these spokes. So let's say we'll hook them up to this, this spoke here. And we can just move them around. So I'm using the translate. I'm losing track of my spoke here. And now we've got our little guy going around. Now that would not be a fun Ferris wheel. That's too fast. <laughs> I think this would be too fast for me to have fun. <laughs> Wee! But you get the gist of it. You've got your little Ferris wheel. And nothing's actually three-dimensional. I mean, if we turn our things back on, you can make it look like there's perspective if you needed to. Just make sure that your guy is sitting behind the appropriate layers. Here's a little Ferris wheel on our clearly wagon wheels. But there's no perspective involved. It's not 3D. It looks like it's turned, but it's all just lies. So those are some of the ways I approach wheels, which has been a question asked to me. Um, I'm going to get to more compositing stuff. I've had compositing questions. But if you guys want to see something in particular, please let me know. Don't be shy. You're not bothering me. I don't have to make a list if you guys make me a list. <laughs> If you don't ask for anything, I have to come up with my own ideas, and I'm so lazy, you guys. So hopefully this stuff makes sense. There's only like two things to take away from this. Order operations and like swishy lines. So just watch your favorite shows and look for these swishies. Most of the time, things like this are not actually moving. They're just like wiggling around. So they got a little bop in them, and then there's swishy lines on it. That's it. Like speed lines makes things look so fast and cool. You can throw in a, like a, a, if you're having the car drive along the road and you're looking down at the road or whatever, you can just throw swishy lines on the road, do some speed lines. Looks like it's going super fast, even though it's not moving. It just has to move a little bit. Like this little bob 
and the wheel helps a ton. Wee do 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 do. So that's it. Little wheel video. Like I said, I think the next one's gonna be compositing, but you never know. Leave an idea, and if your idea is my favorite, I'll do that. So I don't have a plan. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video.